Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave. At the end of the year, 2023 is already wrapping itself up and it's time to go over favorite things of the year. And I have, I have made my list, I've checked it twice and it's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm gonna start right off the front by praising my own work specifically because on adamsavage.com, we're releasing my favorite bag in a long time. This is the EDC4 bucket bag. It is inspired by a bag my friend Saul gave to me last year called the Bucket Owl, which was a Japanese collapsible bag that was brilliant. It made this kind of one foot cube. Um, and Saul said, you should know about this bag. It's an amazing bag. We've used it for all sorts of stuff. And I looked at it and Marcos and I sort of workshopped it into this, which is not collapsible, but honestly, I have been using nothing else between moving between my house and the cave for the last few weeks. This is a stunner and I'm so happy with it. It's on adamsavage.com. Okay, uh, one more thing about products is uh, this year, we started using off-cut fabric from our aprons to make numbered bags, um, these little numbered satchels. And I have been using these to travel for the last uh, seven or eight months, and it's been stunning. Uh, number one is always my dop kit. Number two, pens and pencils. Number three is uh, cables. Number four is comforts of home, like salt and ketchup and other things they might not have in the hotel. Number five is tools. Uh, it's lightweight right now because it's just got a spoon and a flashlight in there. Usually it's also my razors, uh, my electric razors. Um, these guys make unpacking and utilizing my stuff so much faster. Okay. My own stuff out of the way. It's been a really good year for tools. There's been a few amazing things. Um, first up, this ridiculous $140 tape dispenser. It's ludicrous. This price is ludicrous. I swear, there were tools that I waited for years to buy because they cost over a hundred bucks. And when I was like in my early twenties, that was an expense I had to, that when you're in your early twenties, that's an expense you have to really work on. Um, so it's stupid to me that I love this thing so much, but frankly, I use it every single day with the slate and I dig it. I love having access to masking tape. Uh, okay, there's that guy. There is um, this, an aerosolized pressurizable sprayer that pressurizes with a Schrader valve up here in the lid. Schrader valve, for those of you not in the know, is a bicycle tire valve. So you can pump this sprayer up with your bicycle pump if you don't have a compressor, and every maker's shop should have some sprayer for aerosolization. This, being a metal canister, can handle paints and solvents. I love this thing. Um, as you can see, the people that shipped it to me were not very careful. Um, this dent does not somehow compromise this. I consider that sort of an encomium for it. Um, aerosolized sprayer. More tools. Yes. Um, I covered these on the channel before, but not called out as a specific tool. These are these little LED plug-inable magnetic attachable work lights that you can buy for about 15 bucks. There's a whole bunch of different brands this is sold under. I have like a dozen in this shop. There's a couple, there's at least one on every one of my tools. Uh, and some of them there are two. This is a fantastic, like I have used these long enough to feel really confident about their ability to hold, bring light exactly where I need it and show me what I need to see. Um, you can't have too many of these. I always have now like two or three just sitting in a package waiting for like another need. Uh, tools, we have, um, I know there was a recall this year the one wheel remains my favorite mode of transportation. The recall worked great. I like the new software with the beeping, but I'm not here to talk about one wheels, about future motions one wheels. I'm here to talk about their tire inflator. Um, this is a tire inflator they sell on their site and I bought it and I can't tell you how much I love it. There's the, uh, the, the, the tire inflator uh, tube. You hook this into your tire. It comes with an adapter for the thin racing tires. Uh, push your... This can pump this and you can get them to work together. 
here's the reason this is so uncanny that this just showed up a few weeks ago. And there may be like other companies that sell versions of this. I don't know, because I went looking for a tire inflator recently and I was driven nuts by the fact that they're all these like weird shapes and they don't store anywhere. And I already have a weird shaped ancient tire inflator. And I was like, I actually bought a $30 tire inflator on Amazon that I was planning to do a one day build. I was gonna tear it apart and build it into a plywood box with a handle and make this whole speech about how tire inflators need to consider where they're gonna go in your life. And it should go up on a shelf where you can pull it down, not this like weird amorphous trophy shape that doesn't store with anything else. So I was delighted when they released this, a net addition, uh, a net positive addition to my life. Um, lastly, in tools, I wanted to talk about some old friends of ours, um, uh, the Smoke Ninja. When we were doing our Bethesda shoot down in LA, we're working with the newest technology, LED walls and motion control and robot arms. And frankly, our little Smoke Genie was the um, was the one piece of kit that everyone was completely obsessed with. The idea of being able to lay down smoke like this. I mean, for our photography, we've used this thing almost weekly here at Tested. Um, it has completely improved my Ghostbusters trooping. One of these is always in a trap on my belt. And because it's got, oh, did I lose? I put the remote control somewhere. It's got a remote control so I can walk around and my trap keeps smoking and I look like an authentic Ghostbuster. Those are my favorite tools of this year. Books, um, I read, printers. what's that? 3D printers. Oh, good God. No discussion of tools this year would be complete without telling you about 3D printers. Um, they've already been around for like 20 years, I know. But this is the year that it feels like 3D printers moved from a prototyping tool to like a kitchen appliance. Um, can you toss me that thing right on the back of the vise there? Yeah, that, just toss that. Um, this is a part for one of the uh, uh, toy pulse rifle, Nerf pulse rifle. Um, it's an improvement on the stock and this was printed with almost no support. Uh, this to me as a modeler feels like a production part and this blows my mind. This is better. I'm gonna say it, it's better than my resin printer. And I love my resin printer, but I'm really digging what I'm getting out of the bamboo carbons. And they're initiating a real sea change that I can see across the whole industry of people using the same ideas that came out of Prusa and those uh, 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 beautiful machines that can uh, uh, adjust for their own vibration. Life is about to get really interesting and good with 3D printers. Um, I've got now half a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all getting regular, regular use. Okay, those are tools. Um, moving on to books, I only have two. Um, I've been reading science fiction since I was 15 years old. Uh, I discovered it uh, in a book club in fifth grade. I was way younger than 15 years old in fifth grade. And I read a lot of Ursula Le Guin back then, way back then. I have recently been rereading Ursula Le Guin, uh, and I recently reread The Left Hand of Darkness and The Word for World is Forest. Um, Word for World is Forest is an amazing novella. It's only about 100 pages long. It really floored me. I just read it last week. And Left Hand of Darkness, I've read two or three times over the course of my life, is an absolute world burner of a book about identity and about otherness. It is a real, like everyone in the world should read The Left Hand of Darkness. Those are my book recommendations. In YouTube, I continue to fall asleep watching my favorite YouTubers build stuff. Um, it doesn't mean that it's boring. It means that it is the most comforting thing in the world. Um, the YouTubers rocking my world this year, Cinema Tyler with his deep dives into Kubrick uh, and Ridley Scott and so many of my favorite directors and so many of my favorite films and franchises. Um, he's got a wonderful way of boiling all these different interviews from all these different sources to tell a coherent story. Uh, uh, Henry Sagerman does some amazing YouTube videos about complicated gear structures and mathematical ideas that can be expressed physically. Um, 
If you're ever in Boston, uh, the Charles and Ray Eames show Mathematica is there at the Boston Museum of Science. It's one of the greatest science exhibits ever put together. It was put together for IBM uh, in the 50s as uh, uh, an exhibit to physicalize mathematics. Henry Sagerman's videos feel like I'm walking through Mathematica. Um, and I have walked through Mathematica in like five different museums around the world because whenever it travels, I have gone to see it. Um, Steve Mould. Steve Mould is another YouTuber exploring wonderful scientific ideas by building stuff himself in his shop, um, solving mazes with water, uh, experimenting with old uh, uh, techniques for moving air and moving water. Um, there's this thing he did last year where he was talking about, huh, and then I thought that someone could build that and test that. And then I realized I'm going to build that and test that. And the switch he made from like, this is a lovely idea in the abstract. This will be an idea I tackle in the concrete. And all the weight of the responsibility of that on his face. I got to meet him uh, earlier this year and I tell him how much I admired that moment. Um, tested jobs. I want to tell you my two favorite things I got to do for this channel this year. One was to spend a week on the Frozen Empire set in London, the new Ghostbusters film. I'm not gonna tell you anything about what we saw, but it's all coming up on the channel and it's fantastic. Uh, really, really excited to show you what we covered there. Um, and the single best moment of my making career feels like the moment I delivered Newton's death mask container to the Royal Society in London, where it now lives. I feel like I have um, Im improved my chances at the smallest tick of immortality. <laughs> How's that? Um, movies this year, the two movies that slayed me the most were both directed by women. One is Past Live, starring Greta Lee. Um, Norm Chan Untested told me to watch this movie. And then the next day he told me again to watch this movie. And a week later when I hadn't watched it, he exhorted me again. Now I can't think of another thing he's told me to do and insisted that I do three times. So I went home and watched the movie and it slayed me. Past Lives is a beautiful film. Um, it is, one of the problems with film right now, and you're hearing this a lot, is that like nobody wants to spend on a mid-level film and that mostly it's the blockbusters that make money. So little independent films, little small films about small ideas, about small moments in people's lives are harder to get made. Past Lives is like the argument for making those kinds of movies. I was about 10 minutes from the end and I was thinking, who, who, who fought for this movie? Some amazing person fought to bring these little moments to life. I'm getting chills just telling you about it. And then it was like, a woman, a woman fought for this movie and the direction credit came up and was like, yep, there it is. Um, I'm so happy Past Lives Exist. The other movie that floored me was Barbie. Um, <laughs> I, I saw it a little bit late and the funny thing about seeing it late is that I thought there would be all this subtext in it. But the best part about Barbie is there's, it's not subtext, it's all text. Um, uh, and I'll give you an example of what I mean. If you're familiar with the film Gross Point Blank, one of my all time favorite movies, my favorite thing about Gross Point Blank that my, my partner Julia explained to me she like realized this, is that that movie has no subtext. Everyone says their innermost thoughts. In fact, at one point, Minnie Driver says to John Cusack, you don't get it. You don't get to have me. That is the text of the scene and how that plot is working out. She's just expressing it directly rather than expressing words that mean that. So I love the joke of taking subtext and making it text. And Barbie is perhaps the greatest example ever. I was lucky enough that there was a screening of Barbie here at the Yerba Buena Film Center this week, and I got to actually meet Greta Gerwig and uh, Ryan Gosling and tell them how much I admired it. That was a, a, a really a, a lovely moment. We are, oh, by the way, I have one more tool before I forget, but um, I do have, so I said my favorite tested gigs I did, right? The Newton Death Mask, but I do have also a favorite moment that we put up online this year. And it's the moment that the Carl Edward Johansson gauge was able to show a one micron expansion in a one inch gauge block after I had held it in my hands for 12 to 13 seconds. The seeing that I had an instrument sensitive enough, sensitive enough to read the expansion of steel at that scale, 
um, warms the science communicator's heart. Uh, I was remiss in one last tool that I discovered this January when I was working in Tom Sachs's shop, and it is a heat gun. Hold on, where is it? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, 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 uh. There it is, okay. This, um, it's a cheap as hell blow dryer with a little heating element. Uh, they're like 10 to 15 bucks on Amazon. We'll include a link to all of this stuff. Dude, I just love how, there's a whole space in my life for less great heat guns because I don't always want all the heat. So I love my battery powered DeWalt heat gun and I've talked about that. And this one, another of the same. I can get a really nice attenuation of heat with this thing and it's super cheap. I bought three of them. Reader, I bought three. I think that is all of the things that I wanted to talk about. Wait, wait, wait. Ah! Podcasts. I forgot podcasts. Last year, I talked about Karina Longworth's podcast. You must remember this. It remained my favorite podcast this year with a 22-episode series on erotic films of the 90s, ending with Eyes Wide Shut. It is so worth your time. What an amazing deep dive into culture. Um, just one of the most um, educational, erudite, well-researched, well-written podcasts ever. Um, and my new favorite, which I am chopping at the bit for new episodes, is If Books Could Kill, uh, hosted by Michael Hobbs and Peter, Shan Peter Shanchiri. Um, I love, love these two guys. I love the humor and academic rigor they bring. Uh, if Books Could Kill is a deep examination of airplane books, popular culture books, Malcolm Gladwell, Freakonomics, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Sam Fran, Psycho. Uh, they take each of these books and they break them down. They talk about their scholarship. They talk about the arguments they made. Uh, and uh, if you are a listener, you'll appreciate that my wife and I walk around the house going, hell yeah, hell yeah, all the time. Um, if books could kill, it's totally worth your time. I just wish they could make episodes faster. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, not just today, but for this whole year. I cannot believe 2023 is already over. It feels like it started about a minute ago. A minute ago. I hope you guys all have excellent holidays and that the time with your families is uh, rewarding and that your time recovering from the time with your families is also rewarding. Um, I love everybody. Uh, all the stories that any of you have gotten to tell me this year, whether it was on the cruise or at a con, I really appreciate it. And I will see you next year. We've got nine cons lined up. So I will see you out there in the world in 2024. Adam out. Thanks for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. And if you'd like to help us further, help Tested.merch.com? Uh, Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. Head over to our merch store. Tested. What is it? Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. Head over to our store at Tested-store.com. I can't even read what I wrote. Tested. Dash. Dash. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I had to start that again. <laughs> All right, here we go. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. <laughs>